Hello everyone, how are you? This lecture we are going to discuss the part 3 of flavonoids. So before we start discussing the part 3, we will go through the learning outcomes once again. So, so far we have discussed the def uh, definition of flavonoids, chemistry, classification and last lecture especially and the previous lecture before this part 2, we discussed the biosynthesis, extraction and isolation followed by uh, various significance of flavonoids. This lecture mainly we will be discussing uh, the different uh, pharmacological activities of flavonoids okay? and also we will discuss uh, the various mechanisms of action that are behind the pharmacological activities of these flavonoids. So at the end of this lecture you will be able to explain pharmacological activities and mechanisms of action of certain flavonoids. To start with biological and pharmacological activities of flavonoids, that means the various pharmacological activities that are uh, shown by different types of flavonoids are first and foremost the most important activity of flavonoid uh, is the anti is their antioxidant activity okay they are found to be powerful antioxidant in nature and they are also found to be antidiabetic in nature some of the flavonoids shows antidiabetic property and most of the flavonoids shows anti-inflammatory as well as anti-allergic properties as well. Some of the flavonoids are found to be hepatoprotective in nature and also shows neuroprotective action. Interestingly, there are quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of flavonoids recently have been reported that shows a contrasting nature. That is, they they are cytotoxic in nature, which are able to uh, you know, uh, kill the cancer cell, hence they are being used as anti-cancer agent and also anti-fungal agent because of their cytotoxic, cytotoxic properties. Some of the flavonoids are also found to be antibacterial, antiviral, anti-malarial anti in nature and some of the flavonoids are being used as anti-lysmineal, anti-pyronosomal and anti amoebal for their anti amoebal activities. And there are quite a lot of flavonoids which have also shown uh, antithrombotic and cardioprotective effect. This lecture we will discuss some of the important mechanisms of action that have been established for certain flavonoids through various preclinical and clinical studies. So to start with the antioxidant activity, flavonoids are uh, found to be able to protect the body against various free radicals and reactive oxygen species which is other way known as ROS and we know that these free radicals and ROS are found to be associated with uh, various types of disease in the body not only that they can also worsen certain types of disease in the body and among uh, various flavonoids that are found to be a good free radical scavenger and able to inactivate the ROS. The derived of flavones and catechins are found to be most powerful flavonoids protecting against the ROS. Two of the examples I have given here that is flavone and catechin. So derivatives of flavone and catechins are most powerful flavonoids showing the antioxidant activity. We will see why and how, what's the reason behind it when we will discuss the mechanism of action. Now for a flavonoid to show the antioxidant activity, they require or they need to have three structural features in their structure. First of all, a 3,4 dihydroxy structure in drain B. So you see the 3,4 dihydroxy structure in drain B, which in other words, is also known as uh, the catechol ring system because this catechol ring system uh, found to favor the electron delocalization and secondly a presence of an unsaturated bond and this is double bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3 okay in conjugation with the keto group at the fourth position which also provide electron delocalization of the ring B. Now thirdly the presence of hydroxyl group at both position 3, look at the structure position 3 as well as position 4 in conjunction with the keto group at the fourth position which are found to form 
intramolecular hydrogen bonding to the keto group that is present at the fourth position. So all these three structural features can affect or lead to increase in the radical scavenging either by facilitating the delocalization of electron or by donation of hydrogens. So any flavonoids that shows antioxidant activity mainly they have these features. And if you look at the structure, uh, these flavonoids are mainly flavone in nature. So flavone derivatives are highly uh, antioxidant in nature, flavone and flavanols. Here I would like to give one of the clinical study examples that is, that is recently published where uh, one of the flavone derivatives that is quercetin which is uh, known as a free radical scavenger found to reduce the plasma uric acid in an experimented in a, in a, in a, a clinical trial experiment that is that was conducted in moderately hyper uh, uricinic men and it also found to inhibit the enzyme that is xanthin oxidoreductase which is considered as a major producer of intracellular superoxide and also considered as a driver of uric acid synthesis and this study is published by Chi et al in 2016 in one of the very reported journals that is British Journal of Nutrition. If you want to study more about this you can go to this uh, journal website and study further. Now coming to the mechanism of action of anti-inflammatory activity. So let us see how flavonoid actually shows anti-inflammatory activity. We know there are various uh, various mediators of inflammations which are responsible for uh, inflammation at uh, causing inflammation at different uh, parts of the body at different situation and various mediators are involved in various types of inflammation. They are the different mediators. So mainly the flavonoids are found to inhibit the expression of uh, inducible nitric oxide, nitric oxide synthase, inducible uh, cyclooxygenase 2 and lipooxygenase and thus they are found to inhibit the production of nitric oxide, prostanoids and lipotrins, lipotrins which are the major mediators of inflammation. Not only that they also found to inhibit other mediators of inflammatory process like cytokines and chemokines. Now here I would like to uh, tell you something about the nitric oxide synthase. I would like to take the board. So when we talk about nitric oxide synthase, you have to remember there are two types. One is normal type, that is NOS, which is mainly responsible for the synthesis or catalyzing the synthesis of nitric oxide in normal condition from the L-arginine okay. this nitric oxide is an important signaling molecule which is responsible for mediating various functions like uh, maintaining the vascular tone airway tone peristalsis insulin secretion So in normal condi condition, this uh, nitric oxide synthase, remember this nitric oxide synthase, they have two different isoforms. The normal isoform is responsible for the synthesis of nitric oxide from the l arginine which is uh, good for uh, maintaining or regulating the, uh, the various functions like vascular tone, airway tone, peristalsis, uh, insulin secretion and angiogenesis. Whereas when you talk about uh, inducible nitric oxide synthase that is I and S and O S. This is generated mainly in immune response or induced in as
human response, okay, which again synthesized nitric oxide, which is a free radical. Free radical. And this nitric oxide is responsible uh, mainly for. Septic shock and auto immune disease. Now, when you talk about flavonoids, inhibit the nitro nitric oxide synthase. So, flavonoid actually inhibits this one. not this one. So flavonoids are found to be responsible for the inhibition of inducible nitroxide synthase. Similarly, when we talk about cyclooxygenase, cyclooxygenase also has two forms that is COX-1 and COX-2. The COX-2 is the inducible form which is uh, generally uh, induced in response to any kind of inflammation in the body. So flavonoids can inhibit the expression of inducible nitrogen synthase cyclooxygenase 2 and lipooxygenase thus inhibit the production of nitric oxide, prostanoids and leukotrienes and also inhibit the med uh, other mediators of inflammatory process like cytokines and chemokines. The most important examples are quercetin. In case of quercetin, it is found to inhibit both COX-2, LOX and I and OS that is inducible nitric oxide synthase. Similarly, another derivative is that is uh, derivative of flavonoid that is luteolene, which is found to inhibit the NF kappa beta. Another example of uh, flavonoid derivative that is epigenine found to inhibit the production of interleukin 6, interleukin 8, as well as prostaglandin synthesis. Now, can I ask you one question? If you look at all the three structure, can you tell me all the three structure belongs to which class of flavonoids? If you look at uh, carefully, all the three structure belong to the class of flavone type of flavonoids. Flavone because it has a double bond between carbon 2 and 3 and a keto group, okay? At the fourth position, you see double bond between 2 and 3, 2 and 3 and the keto group at the fourth position. Flavonoids also found to inhibit the phosphodiesterase enzyme. This phosphodiesterase enzyme, I would like to mention that it's an important class of enzyme which is responsible for the uh, breaking of phosphodiester bond of various secondary messengers. For example, uh, cyclic nucleotide phosphodiesterase enzyme is responsible for the breaking of phosphodiester. You see the phosphodiester bond of cyclic AMP and cycling GMP. So, they play an important regulator of signal transaction. How? Because when this enzyme, this enzymes are responsible for degradation of the secondary messenger that is cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP. Since flavonoids are able to inhibit this enzyme, so flavonoid indirectly prevent the degradation of this and cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP and thus prolong the physiological response or physiological effect of this secondary uh, messengers and thus and in considered as important regulators of signal transaction. There are again many other families of PDEs like phospholipase C, phospholipase D, autotaxin, sphingomyelin, phosphodiesterase, uh, DNAs, RNAs, restriction endonucleases, restriction in endonucleases which is responsible for the breaking of phosphodiesterase backbone of DNA or RNA. So flavonoids inhibit, since the flavonoids are able, the various flavonoids are able to inhibit different class of PDEIs, they are considered as potential therapeutics for the treatment of various types of diseases like pulmonary arterial hypertension, coronary heart disease, asthma, COPD, 
protozoal infections including malaria. They are also found to be useful by as a PD inhibitor for the treatment of uh, dementia, depression and schizophrenia. For example, nalanjanine and 3574 tetrahydroxyflavone. If you look at this structure, this, uh, these two examples of flavonoids are found to be able to inhibit the phosphodiesterase 1 which is mainly involved in airway smooth muscle activity and airway inflammation. Thus, naringenine can be useful for the treatment of asthma and COPD by inhibiting the enzyme phosphodiesterase 1. Now here, can I ask you a common question? One of the most important example of PD inhibitor. Can you tell me an important example of PD inhibitor? The answer is sildenafil that is the Viagra. So Viagra is an example of PD-5 cyclic GMP dependent PD-5 inhibitor and thus the by inhibiting the PD-5 it increases the vasodilatory effect cyclic GMP related vasodilatory effect and also uh, responsible for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. So a consumption of various types of flavonoids or flavonoid con uh, containing foods are therefore very uh, useful not only by treating various diseases but also in different other ways. So we will uh, finish our lecture today here. We will continue with the mechanism of action in our next lecture. Thank you for your attention. See you again.